In the last video, we had a look at how to extract hidden elements from HTML source codes uh, on different websites. Uh, we took an offset in this website and we figured out how to extract the hidden IDs of these different types of events. So on the left side, you will see something flaring up, um, but you don't see the number 27772 because it's, it's hidden here. So if we delete that, you can see it. Um, but we realized, we figured out how to extract that using um, a simple regular expression and a parse text action in Power Automate Desktop. Um, what we want to be doing today is to build on top of that um, and figure out how we go through the drop down list uh, across the different years and do the exact same thing. So how do we skip from 2024 to 2023 and get the hidden elements or the hidden IDs on these events? Uh, and do that all the way through uh, the drop-down list. So, let's get into it. So this is the flow, this is where we uh, stopped last time. So the flow goes, opens up a browser, uh, gets, gets the HTML source code, then uses this regular expression which we had um, ChatGPT just create for us. Um, and then it stores all the matches that it finds um, into a, a variable called matches and then it closes down the browser. So if we run this, you will be able to see how that works. And if you want to know how to build it, you can always just go back and look at my latest video. But the output, the variable is basically all the IDs here in a list or in a value, uh, in a variable, sorry, uh, which is what we wanted. Now, what we want to do now <coughs> is that we want to, uh, as I said, go through the different years and do the exact same thing for each year. Um, and we do that by, uh, first of all, create a list. So this will be the container or the host uh, for all the matches and all the IDs that we get. We will add for every year, we get a bunch of IDs out, we add it to the list. We go to the next year, we get a bunch of IDs out, we add that to the list. And then the list becomes longer and longer. And in the end, once we sift it through all the years, we will have all the IDs for all the events. That's the intention. So for us to do that, we will just create a new list uh, and we will give it a name, list of IDs, and save it. Then we have that as a base container, uh, but nothing goes into it yet. We need to build that. Um, but now we want to extract, um, we want to extract some data from the website. And before we actually start uh, pulling in the action, I want to show you what we need to do. So if we go back into the website and we click inspect, uh, we again have this little functionality up here where we can click and then we can highlight uh, or click anywhere on the um, on the website and then a subsequent uh, section of the HTML code uh, will pop up meaning that this is uh, within this uh, section um, is the, uh, the drop down uh, menu. This helps us to navigate through the code because I'm not an HTML person so I, this is uh, somewhat new to me. Uh, the good thing is you don't need to know uh, a lot of things to get this uh, to work. Um, but what we need to do and what we need to understand is that we have to use uh, or create what we call a CSS base selector. So CSS is the, the IT language that the, um, that the UI is, is written in. And we need to understand how the website to some degree is built up uh, or, or structured for us to create a small line of code uh, or logic that, that tells the machine uh, that it needs to go in into this specific select uh, section and under this specific option to get out the years 2024, 2023, 2022, and so on. The way for us to do that, the easiest way is to just open up a notepad and just have it on the side here. Um, and the intention is that we create something that's unique so that the computer or the flow that runs isn't confused whether to go up and look at something up in the div up here or in the script section or in the form uh, or in this select or another select statement if uh, or tag is an, another select tag if there was one on the website we need to create something unique that that can only be found within this uh, tree of uh, tags so the way for us to do that is to try <laughs> um to see if this works. So we write down the line of code by saying to the machine, go into the select tag, and we simply just write select, and then we open up 
uh, hard brackets, so close them. And then we say there's an ID here. If we write, if we read this, there's a bunch of nonsense. But then there's an ID that says equal main underscore CBO year. So if we take this whole tag, this whole ID, and paste it in between, we're basically telling the machine to go and find the select tag and then find the ID that equals this. And then we want to be even more sure that the that the um, line of code that we're reading only can be directed to this section on the website. So we will go a step further and say, once you found this tag and this ID, you go in under the option uh, tag, which is the subsequent tag under this select tag. And this should, hopefully, uh, this should, uh, well, it does because I tested it. Uh, this uh, should work so that it goes in here and finds all of these IDs. So we just put this to the side. We can close this down again. And we'll just keep this to the side and then we will open up the uh, flow again and then we will use the action called extract data from web page and we will put it in after the uh, second action because we need to open the browser first and then we need to do this because the intention is that we open up the browser we get all the years which we're doing now and then subsequently we will do a for each loop that runs through all the years but we, for us to do that, we need to have the extracted uh, values of all the years first. So we open this up, um, and what we then do is we open up the uh, website, and then this little helper will pop up. And normally, when you use these uh, actions, you want to, and what you're normally doing in most instances is that you highlight something, and then, as you can see, it's it's interacting with all the uh, with all the information on the website but what we want to do in this instance which is a little bit uh, peculiar we want to click on the advanced advanced settings and then we want to specify that we want to extract a list and as you can see here it then requests us to provide a base css selector so we can do that because we've now written down this small line of code and say this is our base css selector so we can now put this away um, and then we need to give one more uh, input, which is under the attribute. So we want to specify that it needs to pull out the text from within this root on the uh, HTML code. We want to pull out the text uh, from within these tags. So we put down text and then we click OK. And as you then can see here, uh, we've already, this is just a preview, but, but it's already extracting all the years um, out from this action so that's perfect we can then just click finish and we will just save it um, and call it uh, this is the drop down menu years we'll just give it a name so it makes a little bit of sense uh, and then we will press save so now that we have that we can implement a for each loop so we will implement that down below and then we will say that the value that we want to iterate is the drop down menu years. And then we want to store them in the current, uh, in a variable, and we'll just call it a current year. So whatever year it's picking is then the current year according to this. And then we'll click save. And then in here, and this is where the fun thing, uh, or the very smart thing from Power Automate Desktop. Uh, exists uh, among other things uh, there is an action that's called set drop down list value on web page so we will use that not the uh, form filling but the web form filling because it's in the browser automation not in the ui automation um but we will use this and then it will use the web browser uh, instance uh, browser that's fine then we need to specify the ui element so we open that and then we just click add UI element. Again, a little helper comes up and we will now have to actually click something on the website. So we will click the drop down menu and we will do so by like hovering over it and then clicking control and then left click. So now it's capturing that. And then um, what we want to do is that we want to click the select options by name and then it's giving us a an input or a variable input so we will choose the we will click uh, variables and then we will use the current year 
uh, but we have to specify one extra detail, which is that it needs to start from uh, zero, and then it, it will run through that. And then um, once that's in, then what we're doing now is basically we're we're uh, iterating through the drop down drop down uh, list. So we're going through 2024, 2023, 2022, and so on. And in this, for each loop, we can actually then just take these um, actions that we created last time. So imagine that it sets it to uh, 2023. Then we get the details of the web page, and then we use the parse text to get the uh, IDs uh, out. And then uh, we store it in, in the variable matches. Then all we need to do now is that we um, will add item to list. So we want to add all the matches that we find for each year that we iterate through. So that would be the matches. We will add the matches into the list called uh, list of IDs, which is what we called it. Um, so now it should be the case that we will, we've now created a list and empty container. We open up the web browser, we extract the um, all the years from the drop down menu, and then we iterate through all the years starting from the top, going to the last one, uh, which is, I think, 1991. Um, then we get the HTML source code. We use the regular expression that we created in last week's video uh, to get only the IDs out. And then whenever we get IDs out, we put them into this variable. And then we subsequently take all the uh, matches that we, or all the IDs that we have stored here and put them into the overall list. And then we run through the loop again, go back, one more year, do the same thing, add it to all the, uh, add it to the list, and so on and so forth until there's no more years. And then when there's no more years, we hit the end of the for each, and then we will close the web browser. So moment of truth, let's uh, just, uh, we can just close this, and then we should just be able to run it. And I'll maybe just put it over here so you can also see it a bit in action, uh, maybe at least half. If I put it up here, you can see that we're sifting through, we're changing the years, we're adding IDs to the matches, and then we will be able to see in a second that this should have a long list of IDs. Um, but let's just have it run. And then it ended, uh, and the web browser browser closed. And so now we should be able to see that the list of IDs contains all the IDs from 2024, 2023, 2022, all the way down until the last uh, year. And the IDs are different across each year, which also makes sense. Um, because they're different events across each year. And then that's all stored here. Now, the intention is that we can then use these IDs uh, to navigate through. We, um, we create a new variable, and we will do that in the next week's episode, where we take the IDs and we add that to a, a URL. And then that will open up each, uh, each event from each year. Uh, and then we can uh, we can figure out how to extract the information on the uh, on the events from there. So as you can see, if we go into results, when I click this, you can see that the URL changes. So it changes with a question mark ID equals and then the ID. Now that we have the ID out, we can recreate this URL. And that goes across all the uh, events uh, because this is, at least for this website, this is how the logic and the um, the code has been written. So the intention is that we can recreate this this um, uh, this URL, meaning that we land on each page like this. And what we then want to do is to extract all the information from this table over here. Um, but we just want to do it on all the events for all the years. But that'll be in next week's video. See you then.